Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Two Wheels in Tokyo and today I'm going on the cherry blossom viewing ride which I uh, said I was going to do kind of early on a Monday morning and I thought this would be the best time to do it before it gets uh, too crowded. I'm on the street in front of my uh, apartment building here and they have some nice cherry trees here and uh, yesterday during the day, it was Sunday, the street was completely packed with people who were taking pictures of the cherry blossoms and and uh, walking to and from the Shinbijutsukan, Japanese that means new museum. And uh, close to where I live is the Tokyo uh, National Art Center. It's right next to Aoyama Park where I make a lot of my uh, other videos. And so many people are walking by, there <clears throat> many tourists uh, coming by not just to see what's inside the museum but to look at the outside because uh, the design is quite famous and the architect was uh, uh, the son of one of uh, Japan's greatest architects, the man who designed a lot of the facilities for the Olympics and uh, and other landmark buildings here in Tokyo. I'm sorry that I forget his name, but uh, yeah, his son built the Tokyo National Art Center and. He married uh, one of Japan's most famous actresses. We're heading now toward uh, Aoyama Cemetery, which is, has some of the most beautiful cherry trees in Tokyo. And uh, luckily it's not on the, in any tourist maps, so uh, it's not as crowded as the, the more touristy places. Then from Aoyama, we're going to head out to Yoyogi Park, where I did my first video last year, which was a cherry blossom ride in Yoyogi Park. Let's squeeze around here. This funny thing to my right is a traffic tunnel. There used to be a simple street which went this way. But back when uh, Japan was a, I guess, richer country, they spent a lot of money on very fancy uh, infrastructure projects, and this is one of them. The kind of thing that <clears throat> they would do in America nowadays, maybe in California or someplace, where they like to spend lots of money on infrastructure. But now they are more simple and they are more economical. This is the cemetery on my left. We're going to turn left up here in a little bit and take a short cruise through it. It's kind of the morning rush hour. A lot of people are on their way to work and to school. We see a lot of students and company workers this morning. Cemetery is a very nice place to come and relax. It's very shady in the summertime. It's kind of centrally located here in Tokyo, at least in the higher part of Tokyo. Lots of benches and places to sit down, unlike other places, and uh, it's not very busy here. The cherry blossom season is definitely the, the most beautiful time of year to be in Japan. It was three weeks late, <clears throat> unfortunately. They were expecting the cherry blossoms to be gone by now, but actually they're pretty much near their peak. We're going to head 
across the other way through the cemetery. Normally it's not wise to walk in the middle of the street, but in the cherry blossom season people do all kinds of weird things. Dehan K3, probably the most popular folding bike in Japan right now. Very easy to carry on the train for a bus. Now, Ayama Cemetery is uh, famous as being the resting place of uh, the modern leaders of Japan, uh, the innovators. the people who uh, changed Japan from a kind of primitive society to a modern society. And all kinds of people are buried here. The captains of industry, of technology, science, medicine. And up ahead on the left is the foreign cemetery. And most of these graves, foreign graves, come from uh, the late 19th century. Many people came from around the world to uh, Japan to help in its modernization, to help start its industries and found its colleges and hospitals and things like that. And many of them never left. They spent their entire lives here, and not just them, but their families as well. And it's kind of a, a landmark here at the cemetery. Normally you have to pay here. You pay a, a huge amount to get buried here in the first place. You can buy a home for much less. Then you have to pay a maintenance fee. And the foreign cemetery, uh, for a long time, they were considering removing it and then selling the spots to uh, people because there are a few ancestors today who would be willing to pay for the upkeep. But uh, a lot of people in Tokyo were kind of outraged over the idea. And so the foreign cemetery has been left alone, uh, rent free. Aoyama Fire Department. A lot of the roads around here, including this one, are very old, despite the fact that they are surrounded by tall buildings and things like that. They were here two centuries ago when they were just kind of dirt tracks leading from one village to the next. From here we'd already be pretty much well out of the uh, old part of Tokyo, the old city of Tokyo. We'd be kind of like in the woods and foothills overlooking the city. The crossing guard here. There's a school on my left. <clears throat> they have crossing guards near all the schools. Kids have to uh, walk to school here. They're not allowed to be transported by their parents one of those things that they do to try to make <clears throat> kids independent and teach them how to uh, get around and use the transport system. There are no school buses either except for those that are used by the international schools. So a lot of kids have to uh, take the subway or train or bus or sometimes all three. Get to and from school. All right, we're going to uh, Gaien next, then we're going to be crossing Aoyama Dori, and the ginkgo trees are starting to turn green up there.
kind of the rush hour in the morning, but it's not really so bad here. Most people don't drive. Not that it's great. I don't like driving at all. In Tokyo, outside Tokyo, driving isn't so bad. But around here, it's no fun at all. I had to put gas in my car. I guess it was last week. Probably haven't put gas in my car for four or five months. That's how little I drive. Bicycles are a much better way to get around. Now this street here is very famous in uh, at the end of October, November, when the ginkgo trees turn yellow and they start dropping the petals all over the street and all over the sidewalks on either side. And people come from all over Japan to, uh, to see it and walk along under the trees and walk on top of the leaves. They close the street off to car traffic in, in that season, on the weekends anyway. It's nice that there are lots of large parks and open spaces you can enjoy here. And they're safe and they're clean and they're quiet. I'm wearing short sleeves for the first time. It's supposed to be 22 degrees uh, Celsius today. One of the warmest days of the year so far. And more beautiful cherry trees over here by the public restrooms. Another thing I like about Tokyo is there are lots of public restrooms. I went to New York City a couple of months ago and finding a toilet is like, I don't know, finding a gold chain laying on the sidewalk. It's a really rare thing. And it's kind of leading to people uh, pooping on the sidewalks. Luckily, they don't have that issue here. Right here within walking distance, I know of uh, four public toilets. It doesn't count the ones that they have in convenience stores and things like that, so no lack of those here. So to my left behind me would be the Swallows Baseball Stadium. When there are games here, this place is a madhouse. All the fans walking to and from the stadium. And uh, to my right, in the middle of the Gaien Park, is a bunch of athletic fields and a uh, gift shop for the swallows. And coming up on the left is the Olympic Stadium. There are a lot of people in Tokyo who didn't want the Olympics here. They thought it was a huge waste of money. When they originally planned to build the stadium, it was supposed to be a $1.3 billion monstrosity, which would hold like 90,000 people or something like that. And taxpayers in Tokyo said like, hell no, you can't do that. So they decreased the size of the stadium by, I don't know, a third or 40%, something like that made it less expensive and as it turned out because of the pandemic only a handful of people came to see the olympics anyway the original stadium that was built here held like 40,000 people it wasn't especially large but it was uh 10 times big enough to hold the amount of people who actually came so they've been better off just keeping that and it was quite a, a beautiful building And up ahead is the skyline of Shinjuku, that odd-looking building, kind of a poor, poor quality copy of the Empire State Building is uh, actually mostly a communications tower run by uh, NTT Docomo. NTT is Nippon Telephone and Telegraph, and Docomo means everywhere, which is the cell phone network.
And on the right, we're going to follow a little ways on both sides of it is the Chuo Expressway. That's the uh, main highway which uh, you would take from uh, Tokyo to get out toward. Uh, you can go all the way out to uh, toward Mount Fuji or Kawaguchiko. Used to go out there from time to time, but the traffic is always insane either way. And my wife doesn't drive, so I'm the one who gets stuck with it. She has a license, but uh, she's what they in Japan they call a paper driver. You have a license to do something, but you don't actually do it. Alrighty. Yoyogi Byoin, that means hospital. Yoyogi Hospital on the left. Lots of hospitals in Japan. I was surprised to learn that uh, Japan has uh, eight times as many hospital beds per capita as America. Uh, during the pandemic, there was a uh, Quite a panic around here, getting every all the hospitals remember, I guess, ready for a huge influx of patients, which never came. And my daughter was playing with a friend and bumped her head on a table and cut it. And we went to the emergency room, and they had it all set up with uh, all these barricades and screening areas and things like that for pandemic victims. But we were the only people there. It was, uh, in Japan anyway, it was a big nothing burger. Nothing ever really happened here, thank God. And Yoyogi straight ahead, Shibuya to the left and Shinjuku to the, would be to the right. I don't think they allow you to make a right turn here. But uh, going down to the left, the road will go right down through the middle of Omo Tosando and just above the big crossing. Turn right at the bus stop, so it'll take you through the Scramble Kosaten or the busy intersection. summer they had a wonderful festival here, the big uh, neighborhood festival, which uh, usually happens every year, but it was canceled for, I guess, uh, three years due to, the, due to the pandemic. It was nice to see everyone out and about again. And The adults and kids carrying the mikoshi or portable shrines. This is the back side to Yoyogi Park, but I can't go in through here. I've got to go around to the other entrance. Yeah. Go ahead and go. Yeah, it's a big week for kids here. They're starting the new school year. Some of them started last week. Most of them started last week, but they're getting used to uh, being in a new grade or going to a new school. And also, uh, new grads going to work for their new companies. Lots of uh, 
young people in new suits, new shoes, new briefcases, new haircuts, walking in groups to and from their new job. Odd building up ahead is uh, hotel offices and uh, headquarters for the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. This anti skid surface, this uh, orange stuff. Out in the mountain areas are like called like anti drift strips you car fans and fans of Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. You don't want to go drifting over these uh, orange things. Your car is not going to drift. Yeah. Someone's beginning driver magnet is laying on the ground. When you're a new driver here, when you first get your license, you have to put a green and yellow sticker on the front and back of your car for one year so people know you're a new driver. Kind of pointless because most people in Japan drive like they're new drivers. Maybe it sounds a little unkind to say, but... Okay, and coming back toward the entrance to the park, or the entrance I like to use. I don't like to use the entrance on the other side because it's by Harajuku Station and it's too busy. Nice and fast. This is usually about as fast as I can drive my car around Tokyo. In my neighborhood, uh, exotic cars are a really popular thing. There are lots of them, but uh, not that I could afford one, but there's really no place where you can drive them more than 60 miles per hour. They have tracks, but to ride your, drive your car on the track, you need to get the license, and it takes a little bit of work to get the license to drive on the track, and then uh, you have to make a, schedule your track time months in advance. And more than likely, it's going to be rainy or nasty when you try to do it anyway, so... Better things to spend your money on. Right. On the weekend, you couldn't get into the parking lot here. There were so many people. No bikes means bike means motorcycle in Japan, not bicycle. Bicycle is G10 shot. It's like self-powered vehicle. Baiku means motorbike. Nice low gears on this bike, easy to go up the hills. Oh, it's very beautiful today, nice and warm. Uh, the writing says a cycling course, no pedestrians allowed.
Okay, more cherry trees. That's what came to look at. Very popular spot for photographs. It's kind of marshy on the bottom. They don't let people down there. I came here on Sunday morning and it was so crazy. I came in and then just turned around and left. What a wonderful dog, he poses so well. <laughs> Over here we'll take a look at something which uh, most people don't see, and that is a homeless encampment. There are homeless in uh, Tokyo and in Japan, but fortunately, uh, not very many. Japan's programs for homeless are pretty good. And there are no drugs or drug addiction problems here, and that uh, kind of gets rid of the, the main cause of most homelessness. A lot of these guys here, they're uh, alcoholics. Uh, some are convicts. Makes it hard to get a job if you're a convict. And some are just antisocial. Japan's one of those places with lots of rules and lots of uh, emphasis on social responsibility, and some people can't really deal with that. But it's safe here. They work for the most part. They find they collect and sell cans and things like that and papers and they don't steal and they help out around the park they actually go around and sweep and pick up things and keep it clean and so the park tolerates them being here as long as they're kind of uh, not doing anything blatant or setting up their tents in obvious places And lots of trash and trucks here, still working on cleaning up the refuse from the day yesterday. Now this is the, one of the most famous parts of Yoyoki Park. This is where everyone likes to come for their Hanami party. There's some party people on the left there and their dog. We had a little Hanami party at the Blossom Cafe at Hinokicho Park yesterday. Unfortunately over here many of the trees they put these uh, barricades around them so you can't actually sit so closely under them. Yeah, by next week most of the cherry blossoms will be gone and in two weeks these will be these trees will be green. You can see the mess up there. It's a <laughs> Whenever the Hanami season comes they bring all kinds of facilities for containing the trash. The homeless people need uh, new materials for rebuilding their homes. Lots of it here. People buy these tarps and bring them here for parties and company parties, school parties. And they're told to leave them here. Fountain's on the left. She was asking, where's the fountain? See, the fountain isn't really working right now. It's not turned on. They'll wait till the summertime to do that. And all the crows. Yogi Park is the crow capital of uh, 
Tokyo. Right now they're getting ready to nest. They're going through the trash and picking up all the stuff they need to make nests. We have a duck too with the crows. Looks like the crows are giving the ducks a hard time. It's a crow territory here. The ducks aren't allowed. Beautiful fountain here. They'll probably turn this one on later, but not yet. It's still kind of early. Couldn't go through this part last year so much because it was kind of muddy. Some of the crows, especially when they're little, they're kind of actually friendly and talkative. They'll land somewhere near you and start making odd sounds. Sometimes they sound like human voices. It's kind of eerie sometimes. I see more tourists than Japanese at Yoyogi Park today. All the Japanese people are working or going to school. Too busy to enjoy Hanami on a weekday. That was such a beautiful morning here. Yesterday I went for a, a long ride along the river again. I went out to Ukima Park, which is on the edge of Tokyo, just next to the Arakawa River. And it was a beautiful day at the park. It was very fun to see everyone enjoying the, the beautiful day. They had uh, food set up there, like traveling food vendors came up and set up their little kitchens and they were selling obento and traditional food from different parts of Japan. And then the city was there with uh, display booths, information about uh, education and programs and emergencies and things like that. Good thing about having a gravel bike is you can go more places. And there were lots and lots and lots of kids, more kids out in the, that area where it's less expensive and you can have a, a bigger place for kids. Yeah, it's so beautiful here. A lot of musicians come to the park to practice. If you live in a place where the walls are thin and small and your neighbors are easily annoyed, you can bring your instrument to the park. And a lot of people here play. Almost every day there's a guy practicing the saxophone over closer to the entrance. Service center announcement. Oh, it's telling uh, people that they're not supposed to let their dogs off the leash unless they're in the dog run. And this is to avoid trouble with other guests or other people with dogs or other dogs, something like that. Now, yesterday when I was riding along the river, there was a highway overpass and there was a guy who had his complete drum kit out there and just hammering away. 
at his car parked nearby. If you're a drummer and you uh, live in your typical Japanese apartment or house, your neighbors are going to hate you if you practice at home. But this guy found a way to uh, practice at full speed and volume without annoying anyone. Dog parks here are very nice. There are cherry trees inside the dog park. And the dogs can enjoy them with their owners. Ah, in English. Back on the cycling route here. And I'll go ahead and uh, end this video in another five minutes or so. This won't be an especially long one, but uh, just I just wanted to share the cherry blossom scenery and uh, what it looks like here in Tokyo uh, in this season. I like coming here early on the weekdays when the park is quiet. Kind of interesting. You wouldn't know what to look around here right now, but uh, when the war ended and uh, American occupation forces were here, they brought lots and lots and lots of people, and not just soldiers, but uh, administrators and civilians to run various services and things like that. And they built a, a neighborhood in the area of the park here. And they cleared out all the trees and brush and they built pretty much what looks like a, a 1950s Southern California ranch house style subdivision with the, the typical streets and the three bedroom houses with the front and backyard and driveways and garages. And uh, if you were to go down one of these places, you would, you know, neighborhood, you would never know you were in Tokyo. You would think you were in, I don't know, Oxnard or someplace like that, someplace in, uh, in sunny Southern California. And the streets were named after generals and presidents and things like that. And is where uh, the non-military administrators and their families lived. And then. Uh, when Japan regained its independence and the occupation forces left, uh, all these homes were removed and the streets were removed and uh, uh, the park re-established. Kind of interesting. Uh, Yoyogi Park is an old park. It's one of the original five parks established in the city. But uh, that's a part of the history that not many people know about. If you're interested in maps and old maps. I found a book here and it was pretty interesting because it had a, a series of aerial maps over the over the course of a century and you can kind of see the progress of the growth of the city and then the, before the war and then the complete destruction during the war and then the build-up after the war and it's quite amazing to uh, see all the changes which have happened here. Tokyo has uh, been around for a long time, but when it comes to its structures and things like that, it's not old at all. all uh, most of the things here in the city aren't even as old as I am. Even the Sensoji, which you visit today, it's been there since the ninth century or so, but uh, it's been rebuilt many times. Recently, it's been rebuilt in concrete because the cost of rebuilding it in wood is now astronomical. I prefer the wooden original structures, especially when they're new, they smell really nice. But, uh, yeah, it's not as old as it seems. Yeah, Tokyo is probably the, the most modern of large cities.
up here is the cycling center and if you want to come to uh, Japan and ride a bicycle around the park here or to Tokyo you can rent one here it's closed today because it's Monday but uh, Tuesday through Sunday uh, they have bikes available for rent here and they usually have them all sitting out in the front here they have tiny bikes with training wheels they have little bikes with training wheels they have little bikes without training wheels they have mid-sized bikes and they have the larger size bikes and it's not expensive we came here last week I even have tandem bicycles we came here last week uh, and my wife and daughter were riding bikes around the park while I was with the dog at the dog park and the, the rental for two bikes is it was about 1100 yen if I remember right a kid's bike and an adult bike very reasonable and they have a couple of places they have a closed off area where our little kids can ride on the bikes without worrying about uh, the people larger people or adults or older kids riding around them then they have a kind of an intermediate area where people can ride and uh, then of course they have the cycling course here which is uh, where the faster people ride of course a lot of kids come out here too once they kind of figure it out so another reason I like to come here early and on Mondays especially is because there aren't a lot of kids on the cycling path and I don't have to play dodge and you know, to get around them anyway uh, that's it for today's video I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a break here for a few moments uh, I plan to put up more videos as I have time so uh, check in next week and I should have another one uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon